Hello, how are you? Uh, I hope you guys are doing okay. Did you have a nice weekend? Uh, did you do anything interesting? Probably not, because we're stuck at home. Um, but hopefully uh, we can go outside soon, uh, at least for a bit of exercise. So things are looking up. Uh, anyway, today uh, we're going to continue with our English class. So I hope you've been continuing to study, all right, because English is very important. So today we are going to be doing uh, a new unit in the book, all right, uh, so that'll be unit eight, okay, and we're on page 80 in the pupils book, all right, which is this page here, unit eight, the first page of unit eight, the title is It's Only a Game, all right, uh, and it's about sports, okay, so... Hopefully we can enjoy this topic. All right, so do you, do you all have the correct page? So we can start. Okay, so, so to begin with, you can see, I think this is Italy winning the World Cup or something. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, so just to, just to start us off, uh, we're gonna write in the notebook, okay? So let's take our notebooks out. All right, and not much to write. We'll just put the title here, sports, okay? So write the title. And the date today is Monday the 27th of April. All right, so um, copy this in your notebook. And I've got four questions that I'd like you to copy and answer, all right? And I've helped you out with the answers, all right? So the first question is, what's your favorite sport? All right, and you write the answer underneath. My favorite sport is? Mm -hmm. My favorite sport is football or basketball. I like them both the same. Okay, what is it for you? What's your favorite sport? Uh, how often do you practice? Uh, how often do you practice your sport, your favorite sport? Uh, I, before, I practiced maybe twice a week uh, playing football or playing basketball, but now it's more like once a week or... Not much. Okay, but how often do you practice? Every day, every week, every month, twice a week? Okay, you can write your answer. Next question, what sport do you like to play but hate to watch? So a sport that you like to play but hate to watch. For me, we can write our answer like this. I like to play golf, but I hate to watch it. But it is fun to play. Super boring to watch. Uh, and last question, what is your least favorite sport? Least favorite sport. I think my least favorite sport, hmm, it's a tough one. Maybe horse riding. I'm not a big fan of horse riding. Um, okay, so anyway. Copy these questions in your notebook and answer them, please. You can use the phrases that I've given you here. Okay, good, all finished? So let's go back to the page. Okay, page 80 again, okay. So uh, let's have a quick look at exercise two here. Just a little bit of brainstorming. So uh, just uh, maybe you can uh, do this to yourself. You can sort of think about this yourself. Uh, we're gonna make, some lists, a list of some, some sports, team sports, and then sports you play alone. So like a team sport would be, for example, football. Uh, a sport you play alone would be tennis. Yeah. Um, see if you can think of maybe like three more team sports and three more sports you play alone. Okay. And write them in your, in your student's book. All right. So... I'll give you my examples here, football, tennis, okay? What are the sports, team sports, basketball, rugby, uh, well, sports you play alone, mm, tennis, golf, swimming, mm, uh, running, mountain biking, I don't know, more team sports, handball. All right, lots of different sports, all right? So make a little list, okay? 
Have you all finished? Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to do now, all right, uh, is we're going to go into kind of a reading exercise here. Now, this reading exercise is very important because it is part of the PET exam, the, Cambridge, the official Cambridge exam, okay? Uh, it's the first part of the reading. So uh, it's very, very important to know how to do this correctly. And it's, uh, and it's very helpful for your skills in English as well, okay? So the way it works is a bit like this. Uh, you have a short message, a very short message, okay? And then it's going to give you multiple choice. It's going to ask you what is the sort of like, what is the information in this message? What is the correct information? Yeah. So it's very important to understand, uh, to understand things when you're reading the message. Okay. Um, so something it says here is you need to understand the overall meaning of a text rather than the specific information. Okay. So again, sort of, because the way it's written is a very short, short form. So it's uh, it's important to get sort of the overall meaning of the message. And then, uh, like always, we look for, you know, we look at the phrases in the message and we look at similar phrases that can mean the same thing in our multiple choice answers. Okay. So if we have a look at this first one, all right. Um, well, I won't open this. We'll just do it here. Okay. It says, so the message says here, exercise three. Okay. It says, learn to play basketball, learn to play basketball lessons every Tuesday and Thursday, six to 7 PM. Right. It was in the afternoon. Call max. Okay. Lessons every Tuesday, Thursday from six to seven. All right. Call max. So, what is the information in this message, right? What is the general point of this message, right? Is to tell people about basketball classes, basketball lessons, all right? So what is the correct information? Let's have a look at our options. There are lessons twice a week. Call Max between seven, uh, between six and seven o'clock. Max can give you information about the lessons. Max is learning to play basketball. Okay, well, if we look here, right, it says lessons every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 to 7 p.m., okay? Let's have a look at our first one. There are lessons twice a week, right? That is correct, right? It's basically saying the same thing twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday, okay? Now, let's look at why the other ones are not correct. Call max between 6 and 7 o'clock. That's not correct because it says the lessons are from 6 to 7. It doesn't give any specifications when to call max. Max can give you information about the lessons. Okay, well, it doesn't say that in the message. It just says call Max. It doesn't say what who Max is or what he does. Okay, so that's not correct. Max is learning to play basketball. Okay, that is not correct because it just this isn't this is for everybody. Okay, uh, and we have to call Max. That's all it says about Max. All right. So the correct one with the correct information. There are lessons twice a week. All right, good. Let's try another one. All right, we'll look at number four here. Okay, let me see if I can get it so it's, okay. Anyway, so now this one is a little bit more complicated <coughs> because it's an email, right? So when you have something like this, it's very important to remember who is it from, so who's writing, and who is the person talking to, right? So it's from Bruce to Sheila, right? From Bruce to Sheila. Okay, and now let's see what it says, right? So this is Bruce talking, right? It says, I have tickets for the match. It starts at three, but... Let's get to the stadium earlier. Don't forget your scarf. Scarf is bufanda, right? If you don't remember. So Bruce is talking to Sheila. Bruce says, I have tickets for the mash match. It starts at three, but let's get to the stadium earlier. Don't forget your scarf. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a sentence. All right. Uh, oh, we have to make we have to make sentences. Right, correct with the email. So let's have a look here. 
and this one I will do the little box. Okay, so, so let's have a look at the first one. So it says Bruce and Sheila. Mm, it says get there after three o'clock. No, the match starts. Are going to watch a sport? Maybe. Yeah, they have tickets for the match. Bruce and Sheila to be at the stadium before the match begins. Well, grammatically, that's not correct. Bruce and Sheila bring someone something with her. Okay. So it should be Bruce and Sheila are going to watch a sport, right? They're going to watch a match. Okay. They shouldn't. So something that's a bad idea. They shouldn't. They shouldn't what? Get there after three o'clock to be at the stadium before the match begins. Bring something with her. So what should they not do? They shouldn't get there after three o'clock because the match starts at three and he says, let's get to the stadium earlier, right? So before three. Sheila should, what does Sheila need to do? What does he say? Don't forget your scarf. So Sheila should bring something with her. She needs to bring her scarf. And then last one, Bruce thinks it's a good idea to be at the stadium before the match begins. He says here, let's get to the stadium earlier. Okay. So make sure you have all the correct answers. Okay. And make sure you understand it all. Good job. Okay. Very good. Now let's have a look at page 81 here. So here, now this is more like how you would have the exercise in the actual first certificate, uh, in the actual pet exam. Okay. So you've got six questions to do. Okay, so six messages, right? Six questions. Each one you have the choice of three options. All right. Now, uh, before we start this, let's have a look at the. Uh, let's have a look at what the advice here. It says, if you don't understand a new word, read the whole sentence and try to guess what it means. This is true for all reading. Okay, so. When we, yeah, so when you're reading something, if there's a word you don't understand, right, look at the rest of the sentence and think about the context, and you can try and guess the meaning. And like I told you before, remember to think about where the message is taken from, who it is for, and why it is written. Okay, and it will help you understand the meaning of any new words, right? So with all messages, think who is, who's, who's talking, who's writing the message, who is it for, and why is that person writing message? What, is, what does the message say? Okay. So, um, so we've got six here to do. All right, six here to do. Um, so what we'll do is I'll, we'll do the first two all together and I'll leave you to do the last four. Okay. So let's go to our page here. Okay. And we'll start with, uh, I'll put my, my little video screen over here. Okay, so we'll start with number one. Let's have a read. It says, hi, Tim. Sorry. Right now, remember, hi, Tim. So it's for Tim, right? Sorry, but I can't practice for the match today. I'm tired. I haven't finished my homework. Can we go tomorrow? From Adele. Okay, so the message is from Adele written to Tim. Okay. So it's Adele talking here. I can't practice for the match today. I'm tired and I haven't finished my homework. Can we go tomorrow? So which one is correct? Adele has to study today. Adele is tired because she did some sports. Adele and Tim will practice tomorrow. Okay. So the correct answer should be Adele has to study today. Right now that is the correct answer because it says, right? That's the information that we know is true. I'm tired and I haven't finished my homework. I haven't finished my homework. So she has to do her homework. She has to study. Okay. Um, now, why are the other two wrong? It says here, Adele is tired because she did some sport. Well, she says I'm tired, but not because she did some sport, right? So she doesn't say that. So we don't know if it's true. And then it says Adele and Tim will practice tomorrow. Now she says, can we go tomorrow? But she's asking a question, right? Maybe Tim says no. So we're not sure, right? The only one that is 100% sure, Adele has to study today. She hasn't finished her homework, okay? 
let's try number two. All right, so this is an email from, from Alex to Sue. Okay, let's see what it says. We are the winners. My team won the competition, so I'm having a party on Saturday. Can you and Karen come? So Alex is, this is Alex talking and he's talking to Sue. So my team has won the competition. I'm having a party on Saturday. Can you and Karen come to the party? Okay. So the question is, what should Sue do? What should Sue do? Okay. Tell Karen the winners of the competition. Check if Karen wants to go to the party. Ask Karen to plan the party. Okay. So do you, do you know what the answer is? The answer should be check if Karen wants to go to the party. Right. Now, this is the answer because Alex says here, can you and Karen come? He's asking. Okay. Can you and Karen come? Now he's talking to Sue. So Sue has to ask Karen. Okay. So check if Karen wants to go to the party. That is correct. Now these ones are wrong. Tell Karen the winners of the competition, right? Sue doesn't need to do this. All she needs to do is invite Karen to the party. Okay. Ask Karen to plan a party. No, because it's Alex who's having the party, right? And he's just at, he just wants Karen to come. Okay. So these two are wrong. So the only one that's correct is check if Karen wants to go to the party. All right. Okay. Um, pause the video and I want you to do exercise, uh, do questions three, four, five, and six on your own. Okay. So pause the video and do questions three, four, five, and six. Okay. All finished. Fantastic. All right. So let's correct. All right. Let's continue. Number three. Hi, Rob. Are you feeling better? Do you want me to visit you? I can show you what we did in art class today. Elena. So it's from uh, Elena talking to Rob. She's asking, are you feeling better? Do you want me to visit you? Okay, so what's happening? Rob couldn't go to art class because he was ill. Okay, we know that's true because she says, are you feeling better? And do you want me to visit you? Right? So if she's asking, are you feeling better? That means he was feeling bad, right? So he's ill. And then she says, I can show you what we did in art class today, right? If Rob was in the class, she wouldn't need to show him, all right? So he wasn't in class, all right? So that's the answer. Um, let's do number four, okay? So this is from Alice to Mark. And Alice is saying, thanks for the book, I love it. As you know, I'm Hussein Bolt's biggest fan. The photos are amazing. Okay, so she's saying to Mark, thanks for the book. I love it. So the correct answer should be, Mark has given Alice a present, right? He gave her a book. She's saying thank you, right? It's not this one. Mark has borrowed a book from Alice, right? Mark didn't take the book. He gave Alice the book. And Mark has sent Alice some photos. No, he didn't send any photos. The photos are in the book. Okay, so that's the answer to number four. Number five, uh, let's have a look. Tennis coach, beginners, 10 pounds a lesson, can lend rackets to students. Lend is to give, a, to give something and then take it back later, right? Can lend rackets to students, must bring trainers. Okay, just a notice about the tennis lessons. Okay, now it's written in kind of short form. It doesn't say you must bring trainers. It just says must bring trainers. It doesn't say I can lend rackets. It just says can lend rackets to students. Okay. Sometimes the message messages are written without the subject here uh, in this form. Anyway, what's the correct answer? The answer should be, yeah, you need to wear the right type of shoes. Okay. It says must bring trainers, right? Trainers are sports shoes, right? So you need to wear the right type of shoes. Must means it's an obligation. All right. Only beginners pay for, the ten, pay for the tennis lessons. That's not true. It says beginners 10 pound a lesson. Okay, it doesn't say everybody else free. 
and then le- and then you must take a racket to all the le- tennis lessons. That's not true because he says can lend rackets to students. So he has rackets he can give to students. All right. Last one. Sailing trip. Sailing is when you go on a boat. Yeah. Uh, sailing trip. To go on the trip, you must be able to swim well. Okay. To go on the trip, you must be able to swim well. So the correct answer should be, the trip is only for good swimmers. Okay, you must be able to swim well. Swimmers of all levels may go on the trip. That's not true, because it says you must be able to swim well. So you have to be a good swimmer. And then people on the trip must know about sailing. It doesn't say you must know about sailing. It says you must be able to swim well. Okay, so that is the answer. Did you get them all correct? Of course you did. Well done. Okay. Hopefully you can understand everything. Good. Um, okay. So let's continue. Ooh. Now, uh, exercise six. Okay. So if you notice, uh, uh, in the questions, there are some highlighted words here. Okay. I think you recognize all of the words. All right. So we'll just go through them here. There's tired, right? Which is when you, uh, when you've been doing, when you don't have a lot of energy, you is maybe late, falling asleep, you're tired. Maybe you've done a lot of sport, you feel tired. Cansado, okay. Winners, okay. If you're number one, you're the winner. Winners, okay. And one, right? Win, and the past of win is one. Good. Next one, coach. Okay, a coach is a is a is a trainer. Entrenador, the coach, right? For example, the coach of Manchester City football team is Pep Guardiola. Um, and then rackets, right? You play tennis with a racket. Okay, it's called a racket. And then sailing is uh, a sport you do on a boat, right? Going on a boat. So what you need to do is use each of these words in the correct sentence, okay? So let's have a look. Now you can pause the video and try and do the exercise on your own. Okay. Have you finished? Okay, let's correct. So let's have a look, match into the definitions. Finish first in the competition, right? You won a competition. Objects used to hit a ball in tennis or badminton, that's a racket. A person who teaches you how to play sport, that is a coach. This team is the best. Not Barca, just winners. All right, the winners. Uh, If you need rest or sleep, that means you are tired. And a sport you do in a boat is sailing. Okay. Make sure you have all of the correct answers. Okay. Make sure you have all the correct answers in your book. All finished? Fantastic. Okay. So. Um, hold on one second. Okay, so if you have all of that finished, uh, what we can do now is we can go to the workbook and have a bit more practice, okay? So uh, let's go to the workbook, and I want you to go to page 61, okay? Page 61, so just some more practice of the same thing. All right. Um, so unit eight, remember it's unit eight, uh, page 61 here. Okay, now we will skip page 60 to uh, 60. We'll skip page 60 because basically we've just sort of practiced that in the uh, in the pupils book. Okay, um, but if you want to, you can you can do this exercise as well. Okay, it will help you. Okay, but we've basically what we've just done in the class. What I would like you to do for more practice is exercise four here on page 61 okay so again this is with the six messages okay six questions and you have to choose the correct meaning for each message okay exercise four page 61 so all right read the message think who is it from who is it to and what is it saying okay and then you can choose the correct answer remember okay uh some of these have a little question right and some don't so for example number one it just has three options of things that are happening but number two it has a question it says what should tim do okay so pay attention to this as well all right so pause the video and 
have a go at exercise four on page 61. Okay, all finished? Okay, let's correct. Hopefully you got them all right. Okay. So I'll just give you the answers. All right, so number one, here, see, every player must go to the meeting. Number two, what should Tim do? Tell Ellie where to find something. Number three, the team will not be able to play cricket tomorrow. Number four, uh, suggest things Joe, uh, what should Leo do? Suggest things Joe should do or try. Number five, eh, you must be free once a week. And number six, John is asking Andy to decide if he wants to go to the competition. Okay. Did you get them all correct? Did you get most of them correct? Hopefully you got at least four out of six. Okay. Um, if you've got less than four, you have to go back and do page 60. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, hopefully you got those all correct. Hey, 100%. Very good. All right. So now that you've finished that, okay. And then the last little thing, okay, here in the workbook, page 61, exercise five. Okay. So the same exercise, similar exercise to what we've just done in the pupils book. All right. Just so the highlighted words in the questions will just find the meaning. Okay. So let's have a look. All right. Now you can pause the video again and uh, try and answer the questions. Okay. Try and find the meaning of each word. Okay, now you can look at the context, you can look at the sentence that the word is written in if you don't understand. And try and try and figure it out. Use that brain. Okay, all good. So I'll give you the answers. First one, to look after, take care of someone or something. Yeah, right. a lot of people look after their brothers or sisters. Okay, next one, a teacher for a sport team. That's a coach, we already knew that one. Number three, people who are starting to learn something, that's a beginner, right? If you're starting to learn something, you're a beginner. An event where people talk, <laughs> that is a meeting. An event where people talk, good. An event where people try to be the best or the fastest, that is a competition. Everything is a competition. And the last one covered in water is wet. Okay, make sure you have all those answers correct in your uh, activity book, okay? Very good. Okay, so if you finished exercise four and five, we can finish the class for today. Okay, so uh, that's everything. So, uh, yeah, so just to recap, you should have page 61 in the workbook, and you should have page, uh, pages 80 and 81 finished in the pupils book. Okay. And then these questions in your notebook. All right. And you can take a picture of your answers and send them uh, to me and Lucy. Okay. Very good, everybody. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you have a lovely evening and I will see you on Wednesday for our class. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.